Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, not in the uh, SSC Live studios today. Uh, however, I am on the campus of St. Stephen Baptist Church uh, in my office. And this entire week, uh, I'll be sharing the powerful points to ponder from my office. It's good to be sitting at my desk um, because I have not sat really at this desk for some time consistently uh, because of COVID. Uh, 19, I've been operating from my study at home. So it's good to be back uh, on the physical campus here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. This entire week, I'm going to share some thoughts with you from the Word of God about the eyes of faith overcoming spiritual blindness. Um, someone was asked, uh, when someone asked Helen Keller on one occasion, uh, is there anything worse that you can think of? than being blind. To which she responded, what's worse than being blind is having eyes that do not see. You, 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 you can see, but you, in a sense, you cannot see. And the worst type of spiritual blindness is to have spiritual cataracts over your eyes that blur the, your vision about God's plan and God's purpose for your life. The basis for this week is a very strange scripture uh, that is found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. And Jesus uses a metaphor that is often quite confusing to many of us. And uh, in this metaphor, he talks about the windows, the eyes being windows to the body. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body is your body fills up. Stop here with light. Now let's break it down. This is a metaphor, and one of the reasons why you have to, when studying the Bible, ask yourself the question: What did it mean before you determine? what it means to you, what it meant rather, what it meant when it was uh, first stated before you determine what it means centuries later is because words have different meanings in different historical contexts. For example, your eyes are your windows. You know, that's, that's, that makes sense. Your eyes are your windows, uh, just like uh, windows allow you to see outside into the world. You can't see what's going on outside uh, through a wall. You have to have some windows and, and just as windows uh, allow you to see, our eyes allow us to see. But it says your eyes are windows into your body. Now, the problem is, is you think of body, you're thinking of your physical anatomy. But when Jesus says your eyes are your windows into your body, he's not talking about physical anatomy. The Greek word for body in the New Testament is the word soma, S-O-M-A, soma, um, later translated into Latin, which is corpus. Corpus is the Latin word for body. There's a city in Texas called Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi literally means the body of Christ. So what is Jesus saying when he says the eyes are windows into your body. He's not talking about body as a as physical anatomy. Body can also mean personality, personality. So let's break down what Jesus is really saying. So when Jesus says your eyes are windows into your bodies, what he is saying is that what you see or what you focus on determine what type of person that you are. That's what he's saying, and that's true. What we tend to focus on uh, determines on what type of individual we are. And if we focus on the wrong things, then or the negative things, then we'll be the wrong and the negative person. If we focus on the possible things, the blessings of God, then that determines our attitude. Our, let me put it in other words. Outlook determines outcomes. That's what he's saying, your outlook. And that's why we want to look at things through the eyes of faith. There's a lot of negative things in our world that we can focus on. But there's a lot of things 
that are in our world that God is sending our way to say, you know what, in the midst of your negative situation, I want you to focus on these particular things, which is my way of saying to you, I am with you because the eyes are the window into the body or whatever we focus on determines what kind of person we are. Back in the day, there was a man who was coming through town and he stopped at a hardware store and he asked the man, the hardware store, he said, uh, in front of the man's son, by the way, he said, I'm thinking about moving to your community. It was a small community. It's a rural community. And I'm thinking about moving to your community. What kind of people do you have in your community? He said, well, what type of people do you have where you came from? And he said, well, uh, I have people who are selfish and mean and inconsiderate. He said, well, that's the kind of people we have here, selfish, mean, and inconsiderate. Well, about two hours later, another man comes into the hardware store and asks the same question. What kind of people do you have in this community? And the owner of the hardware store in front of his son said, well, um, uh, he said, uh, well, what type of people do you, do you have in the community you came from? He said, very positive, very upbeat, um, very encouraging type of people. He said, that's what you have here. Very positive, very upbeat, very encouraging people. And the man left. And then the son asked his father, he said, dad, the first man came in and you told him that it was a selfish town. The next man comes in and you said, it's a great town. He said, what is it? He said to his son, it's both because your eyes are your windows into your, your body or your eyes are your window into your personality. In other words, whatever your eyes have been conditioned to see, that's what you're gonna see. If your eyes have conditioned you to see nothing but negative, that's what you're going to pick up on. That does not necessarily mean that's all that's there. That simply means that's all you have conditioned your mind and your heart to see. And that's a tragedy because if all you can see is that which is negative and impossible, it could be that the possibilities of great things are there, but you just can't see them. You remember Michelangelo? Uh, was asked on one occasion, the great Renaissance sculpturist and painter was asked on one occasion, uh, how are you able to take a just a, a slab of marble and then create from that slab of marble a, an, a, an angel? And he says, because I see angel in the marble. And then I take my hammer and my chisel and I chip away at everything in that slab of marble that does not look like an angel. And that's what God wants us to be able to do with the eyes of faith, to see in the worst of situations something angelic. That's the eyes of faith. God wants us to overcome spiritual blindness. Do you realize that many of the things that you've prayed for and asked God to do in your life, perhaps God has already done it, sent it to you many years ago, the only reason you don't have it is because it's stirring you in your face. It's a treasure in a, a treasure in plain hidden in plain sight. Let me say that again. So you got a blessing hidden in plain sight simply because you don't have the eyes of faith to see what's already there. And this entire week, we're going to talk about how God helps us to overcome spiritual blindness so our eyes will be open and say, oh my God, I could have done been living this way. 30 years ago, I could have started this business 25 years ago. I had these possibilities many years ago. And would it not be a tragedy to get to heaven? And you ask God, God, why didn't you answer that prayer? And God says, I did answer that prayer. I gave it to you. Your problem is that you were so myopic. You had those, those satanic cataracts on your eyes that you could not see what I had already put there for you. Well, guess what we're going to do? We're going to remove some of those spiritual cataracts this week, and, and we're going to give you a new model to use so that you will look at life totally different. Why? Because the eyes are the window into the body, the eyes. So in a sense, it's not the nays that have it. The nays don't have it. It's the eyes 
that have it. Ask God to open your eyes. We're going to do that this week. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people and help us to be discerning and have illumination uh, for the wonderful blessings that are all around us, but we're just too blind to see. God, thank you uh, as we move towards the close of the first half of this year. It's moving quickly. I pray that the second half, in the name of Jesus, will be a half in which our eyes are open to new possibilities that have always been there. We just didn't see it. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, thank you for being with me today for another powerful point to ponder. Uh, look, everyone needs a church home. If you don't have a church home, I'd love to invite you to uh, contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Email us, newstart at ssclive.org, newstart at ssclive.org. Look, I pray that you have a blessed day the rest of the day. Um, what are you seeing on your in your situation? It all depends on what you're prepared to see. Ask God to open your eyes. And don't forget, we're in the midst of, still in the midst of COVID-19. So don't forget to remain safe and remain sane and never forget that God is in control. I will see you tomorrow. Be blessed.